discuss the importance of sensing the market environment and consumer behavior through marketing research. And we've discussed the importance of looking at various market segments to target a market and also develop a marketing strategy. We can move on to the concept of market value creation. Here what we're going to do is to add value to our business offerings by developing a marketing mix to reflect the needs and characteristics desired by the target market that were identified in our market sensing and market interpretation processes. So when we talk about a marketing mix, we typically refer to um, our product, our price, uh, some people refer to it as place and promotion, therefore the four P's of marketing. While we will use the, use the terms product and price, we prefer to use the term supply chain management to distribution or place because it's much more encompassing with getting the product to the consumer. And we also use the term integrated marketing communications instead of promotion, the fourth P of the marketing mix. So when we talk about the marketing mix and the four P's of product, price, place, and promotion, we refer to those as product management, price strategy, supply chain management, and integrated marketing communications. Today we're going to begin talking about product management and ways that you can classify products. So you may recall when we were talking about markets, we classified markets as being either consumer markets or organizational and business markets. And so in the same way, for consumer markets, we will develop consumer products. And for organizational or business markets, we will develop organizational or business products. So one way to classify types of products would be to look at the market that we're trying to uh, reach and classify our products as either consumer or organizational. Let's look a little bit further about this concept of consumer products. And here what we want to talk about are ways to classify just consumer products. We could classify consumer products as either convenience, shopping, specialty, or unsought. And the reason that we classify consumer products is that there are some similarities in the way we market convenience products that are different in the ways that we market shopping or specialty products. So if you can figure out what type of product you're selling here, a convenience versus a shopping versus a specialty product, that might give you some ideas in how to go about marketing those products. So convenience products tend to be those products that are routinely purchased, they're relatively inexpensive, and people will readily accept substitutes if their preferred brand isn't available. So items like ketchup, toilet paper, those tend to be convenience products. And we know that people don't spend as much time going through the consumer decision-making process to purchase convenience products as they would, for example, to purchase shopping products. Shopping products are those that are purchased occasionally and consumers will do some comparison and shopping, so they'll probably be using a different type of problem-solving behavior. Specialty products could be either convenience products or shopping products, but they're purchased less frequently and they're relatively expensive for the product category. And so they're seen as very special or very unique. So while a jar of jelly would be typically considered a convenience product, if I hand grow uh, my berries that I put into my jelly and I hand pick them and I hand make them and I put them in special jars and they're specially labeled and they're sold only at specialty uh, gourmet food stores, 
then this jelly would be a specialty product. It would be more expensive than the brands of jelly that you would find at a, um, a typical um, Walmart or a convenience store outlet or grocery store. And people would like it so much that they would want that brand of jelly. So we could classify consumer products as either convenience, shop, shopping, or specialty products. But we can also classify consumer products as unsought products. These are items that the consumer may need but doesn't necessarily think of buying. Like for example, um, pre-planning of funeral services or life insurance or security systems. These are things that people don't necessarily want, but they are definitely things that people might need. So those would be classified as unsought products. Let's take a break here for just a minute and discuss some ways that products differ from services in terms of their characteristics quickly here. Services tend to be intangible. And so because they can't be seen or touched, assessing their quality and value is very difficult. In fact, um, most of the customers will never even know how good the service is until after he receives it. Another way that services are very different is that you cannot separate the production of services from the consumption of services. So it's very important for the uh, service provider to manage the delivery process because the client is able to observe all the actions and make uh, judgments about value and quality based upon how the product is delivered. Services also have variability uh, because they are delivered by people and human behavior is difficult to control. People can't be perfectly consistent all the time. They get tired or certain different times of year. Um, things may affect the ability for people to deliver services. So services have some variability in terms of quality. And services are also perishable. You can't store services or inventory services for future use. So, for example, if your hotel sells out, it's not like you can pull more from inventory. Or if you don't sell out to a theater or something, it's not like you can save those for a later time um, when you could sell those. So the bottom line here is I just wanted to illustrate to you how services, unlike products, are intangible, inseparable, variable, and perishable. So let's back up and talk about these different categories of consumer products, convenience, shopping, specialty, and unsought. You may remember that we previously talked about different types of consumer problem-solving behavior, uh, where the consumers go through problem recognition, information search, evaluation of alternatives, purchase and post-purchase evaluation. And we classified the speed and extent with which they went through this process as either being routine problem-solving behavior, limited problem-solving behavior, or extended problem-solving behavior. And so now we can see how consumer behavior relates to the products that we're selling. For example, if we're selling a conven convenience product, our customer is probably going to use routine problem-solving behavior, which explains why they'll quickly make the purchase and they'll quickly accept substitutes if our brand is not available. It also explains why if we're selling shopping products, consumers probably will go through some type of limited problem-solving behavior. It explains why if we're selling specialty products, how consumers will probably go through extended problem-solving 
unless it's a product that they are brand loyal to, in which case they may then again use routine problem-solving behavior. So you can begin to see how our study of consumer behavior affects the marketing of products, uh, specifically consumer products, that we can classify as convenience, shopping, or specialty. And once we classify them, it can affect our marketing strategy. For example, when we're looking at pricing, our pricing must be very competitive for convenience products, and generally those will be lower priced. But if we take that convenience product and reposition it as a specialty product, we're probably going to want to charge more for it. Because if we don't charge more for it, people aren't going to see it as be being very special. On the same token, if we're marketing a convenience product, we're going to want to distribute it in many outlets. However, if we're positioning that product is in a specialty product and we make it available in many outlets, they're not going to see it as very special. And so we're sending mixed messages to the market. In terms of promotion of this product, if our product is a shopping product where people want to compare alternatives, but we don't offer any personal selling or salespeople to talk about the why this particular uh, item is better, then we're not going to be able to help them make their purchasing decision. So I hope you can see through this presentation how classifying products as convenience, shopping, specialty, or even unsought begins to uh, affect and help us decide our marketing strategy for the products that we're